Hi everyone, it's Eve Bentley Blitz from spiritgirl.com and welcome to the Spirit Girl Talk Show Podcast. I'm super excited to be here with you today and with our very special guest, Lisa Tahir. Lisa Tahir is a licensed clinical social worker and she is the author of The Chiron Effect, Healing Our Core Wounds Through Astrology, Empathy and Self-Forgiveness endorsed by His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. She's a top-rated therapist. She's also a certified Reiki teacher and a thought coach through the Institute for Transformational Thinking. She also has a weekly podcast show, which is titled All Things Therapy. On International Women's Day, we want to give not only Lisa a big shout out for making a difference in this world, but also all of our podcast listeners right around the world. Happy International Women's Day. And thank you for joining us here on the Spark Girl podcast show. Lisa, how are you today? Yvette, I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be your guest, especially on International Women's Day. And just a big hello to everyone listening and watching. I'm super grateful and honored to be here with you. First of all, congratulations on your book. And Thank especially you. for having it endorsed by His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. That is a huge achievement. Congratulations. How does that honestly feel for someone who is so passionate about spirituality, empathy, kindness, and all of those beautiful values that we should cherish and uphold in our global community? Thank you, Yvette. For me, it's a blessing to have His Holiness's endorsement. And especially because the background I came from, I didn't used to believe in myself when I was a young person in high school, even my cumulative grade point average was just a 1.86. And in the U.S., you need a 2.0 to even pass and graduate from high school. And my scores were so low because I had experienced chronic abuse and trauma growing up that really affected my self-esteem and ability to focus on school and do homework and At the time, I didn't know how one's psychology and emotions affect your output, affect your ability to study and retain information, and then regurgitate it back on tests and such. I just thought I was dumb, and I was told that. And so for me to have grown up and get into therapy when I was 21 years old, knowing I had some some wounds to heal and some thought patterns to shift, you know, to grow up and ask for the endorsement of the Dalai Lama on my work and my book felt like it really was deeply healing to that younger person that I was who didn't believe in herself and thought so much was my fault. Instead of learning and realizing, like I share in my book, that we really are the product of what we're told as young people. And we tend to believe that about ourselves, even when it's negative, and we tend to blame ourselves. And in my book, I really want to help you as the reader to shift and let go of those destructive patterns of thought that tell you you're not good enough, when you feel like you're not worthy, when you feel like you're not attractive, or whatever it may be, to really release those thoughts and instead replace them with, I want to know my value and worth. I want to know that I'm important, that I'm smart, that I can do this. And so for me, it it really was a blessing and a final kind of healing on the way I used to hurt and judge myself with my thoughts. Your title of your book is The Chiron Effect. It's healing our core wounds through astrology, empathy, and self-forgiveness. What is the meaning behind the title? Oh, that's a great question, Yvette. The title evokes that we heal our deepest core wounds. For some of you listening and watching, it might be wounds like I had around abuse and trauma and abandonment. And for others of you that grew up in a healthier home and environment and believed better about yourself and for yourself, these would be instead of core wounds, they're areas of vulnerability where you might just feel not good enough. You might experience some time feeling neglected, but it doesn't go quite as deep, but it still is something you harbor 
privately against yourself. Your self-esteem might be low, though you're outwardly successful. Vulnerabilities people don't know, but nonetheless, they affect you. They affect the orbit that you have, the people, places, and things that you habituate because we're all our own little solar system. We're all planets that orbit other people, planets, and that orbit us. And that frequency, that orbit is dictated upon what you believe is true about yourself. And Chiron in your astrological birth chart identifies this area of wounding or vulnerability that keeps you believing as you do. And in some areas of your life, this might be great that you really excel in an area of your life. But in the areas where you think less of yourself, it inhibits you to really have the kind of experiences you want, the relationships you want, the money that you want to make and continue to receive. And so the Chiron effect speaks to these thought frequencies that affect our patterns, our orbit, in our own lives. And the healing is found through empathy and self-forgiveness. Astrology is like that diagnostic departure point. Astrology is like that diagnostic point. You find out what sign Chiron is in based on your time of birth, place of birth, and date of birth. And if you don't have the time of birth, it's okay. It's not required to generate if Chiron is an Aries or Gemini or Scorpio or Taurus. There's a chart in my book as well as an interactive website. And then you're able to see what limiting belief has been operating in the backdrop of your mind. For some of you, it might very well be conscious that you're aware that this wounding of neglect really has affected me. And for others of you, it might not be as apparent. And it's through really forgiving yourself for whatever judgments you've held against yourself and finding your healing through leaning into that vulnerability or wound to see what information it contains for you. Wow, that's so impressive. And how did you stumble across astrology and in particular psychoastrology? Psychoastrology is a term that I trademarked and coined. It simply marked this intersection between our natal or birth chart astrology and our personal psychology. So it's quite simple in what it is. I've been a trained therapist for over 20 years. Astrology came to me in meditation to look into this Chiron thing, who I didn't know who Chiron was. In Greek mythology, he was a centaur, the founding father of the healing and medical arts. Carl Jung talks about Chiron in his work around the collective unconscious, having to do with our collective narrative around wounding and vulnerability. And in astronomy, Chiron is the name of a comet slash minor planet discovered in astronomy in 1975, I think it was, by a Dr. Charles Cowell. And so I just started to lean into this, Yvette, and like explore, like I'm sure you've done in your life, listeners and viewers, you know, you get a hold of a, a question in your mind and you go down the rabbit holes. And it led me to four years of writing and research to create my book. Wow, that's so incredible. And that came to you while meditating. Do you do your meditation in the morning, in the evening? You know, I've learned that even if I just have five minutes, it's the first five minutes I spend in my day. I pour a cup of black coffee and I sit on the couch. And even if it's literally five minutes, I set a timer and I close my eyes. I welcome this new day. I ask to be aligned with universal mind to really place my subconscious mind in alignment with infinite intelligence to receive that guidance, to receive those insights and awarenesses, to be loved, to know my value and worth and recognize value and worth in others that I'll be encountering that day, to allow you to come through me in my sessions and just whatever today is happening to really be in alignment so that I'm really just going to have the best day. I even say this is going to be the best day of my life. And often I try to budget longer than five minutes to do a longer meditation, but it's definitely the first thing I do. And I might end the evening or day with another meditation, but if not, it's like how I've started my day. And I'm wondering about yourself. Do you have a way to approach meditation? Actually, similar to you, so always at the start of the day, 
always make my coffee. I always sit on the ground. So I never sit on a chair first thing in the morning. I get oh, grounded wow. on my yeah. yoga mat. So I sit down and then I generally just sort of try and connect because I have a view of the outside mother nature, like clouds and the sky and, and watch that formation and the energy of you know, the wind coming through the trees. And I really just practice more mindfulness but just checking in with myself and getting very grounded is so important for me. I practice gratitude as well mm -hmm. in that moment and really just connect within first. So I'm a big believer we have to connect with ourselves first before everyone else. So that's my non-negotiable. Yeah. I do too, and I've learned my day goes better when I start it that way and go to emails after, you know, go yeah. to text and calls afterwards because I'm starting from a place of I've asked for help and assistance. I've aligned myself with infinite intelligence and I feel like that connection. Like I feel like, okay, like the universe is helping me today and it's going to be in everything. And even if something goes sideways or a different way than what I intended, I trust that somehow this is going to lead me to the wonderful outcome that I intend for everyone involved. Sometimes it just might not look that way in the moment, but time is moving and we're taking these snapshots in time sometime too soon. You know, when something hasn't fully manifested, all the cooperative components haven't been brought into place. And I, I can tell you in my own life experience that you might want to see where you're at, but don't let it be the end of that story. So if something is pleasurable or desirable to ask for it to be moved into a better place a more harmony and love and peace. And just, you know, some things might change quickly and others might take what feels like a long time to us, a year or so, because there's just so many moving parts that need to kind of work together and it's happening. It's just us staying in that belief and faith that things are working out for us because we're more loved than we know. No, I don't believe that we're being tested, Yvette. I believe all the universal forces are aiding and assisting us for our happiness, for our health, for our well-being, that everything we care about is cared for. And to try to, you know, reach into those spaces in your own life and mind to find that inner peace. I want to ask you, Lisa, at the moment, many people are feeling so overwhelmed with all of the news with the war in Ukraine and they're seeing yeah. very distressing uh, footage of women in particular fleeing with their small children. Yes. For someone out there who's listening and tuning in now and feeling this world is like a horrible place and yeah. I feel like I'm in a horrible place, Sure. what would be some words of wisdom you could offer up to them just to feel that glimmer of hope? There is still beauty in the world and kindness and empathy and light and love and better places to be in the world. Sure. I would say first and foremost to acknowledge the truth that war is horrible and there are terrible places in the world right now because of the war. And I know I send love, I send peace to the people of Ukraine and that their way is made safe and that they are protected and guided and that Peace is put in the leaders that are responsible to end and stop this. And so I think definitely like not to sugarcoat or whitewash the things that are happening in the world that are unjust where peace needs to be replaced and instilled instead to have deep awareness and sensitivity and compassion for those people that are suffering and losing their homes and displaced and just to send love to do whatever you feel moved to do as part of that solution. If it's to donate money or items, however you feel led to ask to align with the solution for you and notice what comes back in your thoughts in the next day or week or so, the opportunities available to serve, to aid, and just to hold your own vibration of wellness and peace is so important because from a place of lack, from being upset and angry and just messed up, you know, you can't be of service when you're sick and you're impoverished. So it's really about the value of your own alignment, your own strength and your own health 
and your own clarity so that you can make decisions. How do I want to serve? What do I want to do to affect change if that's how you're led and called? Because those clear messages will come through. And it might just be in your own community, being that beacon of light and being someone others can talk to and go to that you're really taking care of yourself so that you're not so overwhelmed by too much news that then you're not able to listen or be compassionate and empathetic to others or yourself. So you might need to limit how much news to get enough each day to have an awareness of what's going on and then shift your focus to how do I take care of myself today and my loved ones and do my job well and be an effective and loving parent and partner and friend. And I think in those ways, we find our way through the pandemic, through whatever it's happening, maintaining our own well-being and health, emotional health, I mean, as well as your physical health and your spiritual health. What would you say, Yvette? Well, for me, I agree with everything you've absolutely said. I've had to check in with myself. And if I'm over consuming content, which is the news, which is quite frankly, all of the bad news you could ever find in the world, that is what is always highlighted. So that in itself is overwhelming and anxiety trigger. It's a lot of stress. So when you look at the news, you can guarantee you're going to get a hit of not feel good endorphins, a hit of negativity and anxiety in so many ways. So I've had to become very self-aware of limiting my media content, but not getting caught up in a yeah. hundred people's different videos and ideas and thoughts and all of that. Otherwise it's too noisy. I've done a lot of praying yeah. and praying for everyone's safety and yes. peace and love. I believe that we have to be that example. We can't just go on to Instagram and say, peace, not war. But then as an example, be consuming violent movies, Right. be supporting entertainment as in computer games that are all about war all about right. killing yeah. because it's in order to make a conscious shift you know, we have to walk the talk right. so if we want to end war it can start with our own backyard as in as a parent or as an individual going right well I'm not going to support war games yeah yeah where young children now or people are encouraged to learn from a young age how to kill people on a computer game or I'm not going to consume violent movies or music that right. is violent. I think if we start with the basics, we can have a contribution to ending war where we can have a rippling effect where if this generation right now went from not being encouraged to cons do you know, war games, killing games, because right now what I'm seeing playing out feels like a really bad war computer game but these are real people's lives so yeah. as you can see it feels like it's transpired in that way now lisa i'm very conscious of our time which yeah. is getting away what are some of your other self-care rituals and how do you take care of yourself in addition to daily meditation i love exercise and fitness I love reading. I love going on long walks. I love socializing with the people I love and my pets, as you just saw my kitty cat in the video. And really just asking every day, what do you need, honey? What do you need from me? And answering myself in as best of ways as I can. Love that. And what is your hope for your newfound book readers? My hope is that you know how loved you are, that you really are able to step into an awareness that you are the most important person in this universe, as well as the person next to you. And that deep awareness of your own value and worth is going to help you extend more kindness and compassion, especially when you might be tired or overwhelmed or frustrated to pause, to respond instead of react and notice how your life starts to change for the better. Wow. And with it being an International Women's Day, what would your hope be for the upcoming generation of girls who will turn in to be women? I'm so excited to see today's young girls grow up. I think the young girls today are just amazing. I'm seeing so much compassion and acceptance and love, be it different sexualities, 
gender fluidity, just more you know, love and acceptance and tolerance and less focus on judgments through appearances. And I just see so many wonderful traits in the young girls of today. And I'm so excited to see who they grow up to be and how they shape our world for the better. And I love that they have the power of technology and the power of their voice because we've yeah. seen some incredible young women stand up and say how they feel. They want to make change in so many areas. They want the place to be more inclusive and they want the environment to be cared for. Absolutely. And that to me is so inspiring because when I grew up, it wasn't like that. Now, Lisa, how can we stay in touch with you after this podcast show? Yvette, I'd love that. You all can find me on social media. I'm at NOLA Therapy. It stands for New Orleans Los Angeles Therapy on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. I have a YouTube at NOLA Therapy, and that's my website, N-O-L-A-T-H-E-R-A-P-Y.com, NOLATherapy.com, and I'd love to be in touch and even even offer your listeners and viewers if they want to do a psychoastrology 30-day intensive or a, a single session to offer 50% off the price that's on my website. And they can just mention you or your show. And I'm happy to honor that as a gift. Thank you so much. That is so kind of you. Now, You're Lisa, welcome. this was such a short podcast that I'll have to get you back on the podcast show when we have way more time. I but I that. just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the beautiful work that you do in transforming other people's lives and helping them to feel good from within and helping them to feel loved, valued, and like they're enough in this world. Thank you for sharing your compassion, empathy, kindness, and your book and message. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I know the holiness 14th Dalai Lama would be very proud of us today sitting here across the universe, across yes. the world. I'm here in Australia. You're in the US. And yeah. here we are connected as one and trying to make a difference in the world. So thanks again, Lisa, for being a guest on the Spirit Girl podcast show. I'm super grateful. You're welcome. I'm so honored. And thank you, Yvette. Mwah. Yes. We'll say goodbye to Lisa Ta here from nolatherapy.com. Be sure to check out her book. I totally recommend it. Be sure to subscribe to leave a five-star rating and review and to tell someone you love to. And together, let's feel good from within.